Simplified Chaos, Episode 27. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to start leading a more purposeful life. This is Simplified Chaos. everyone welcome to simplified chaos this is one of your hosts jillian and i'm with my co-host nicholas what's going on folks we have ourselves another great episode today jilly what are we talking about we're diving into the juicy topic of postpartum postpartum life after childbirth childbirth <laughs> something you I wanted to say life after Lucille, but that's not right. No, life after the birth of Lucille. Correct. Yes. So this should be a fun topic today. A very informative topic. Hopefully I can... You'll laugh, you'll cry. (laughs) Jeez. We'll see what goes on. I hope there's no crying. No. (laughs) There's no crying in postpartum. There's no crying. (laughs) Just kidding. There's a lot of crying in postpartum. But before we (sighs) dive into that, feeling a little gratitude, Jilly. I am. Yeah. What are you grateful for today? Today, I am grateful for just... um, just connections I've made on Instagram. Yeah. You know, social media can be uh, a bitch sometimes, but social media can actually bring people together. And it's true. There is a girl I went to high school with, and I really wasn't close with her in high school, but we've become pretty good Instagram friends, which is just kind of funny that not in real life, but in Instagram life. And her name is Erin Sanavong, and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly but she gave me this really cool idea um for just how to have a little bit more sanity over the summer she has i believe three kids and she has this really cool designated summer days idea that she does with her kids Uh, yeah and it's helped me kind of contain the chaos with lucille since i'm like okay i have summers off i'm a teacher what do i do now Um, But anyway, so each day of the week, kind of like what we do for designated meal nights, we have a meal during the week, you know, for each night of the week. She does for the summer. So Monday is make it Monday so you can make something. Tuesday is take a trip Tuesday. Wednesday is water Wednesday. Thursday is thoughtful Thursday. And Friday is friends and family. And Monday we we made um, a baked good. So it was fun baking with my mom and you know lucille just kind of watched uh and she took diligent notes (laughs) she did and tuesday i took a trip by myself to visit a friend and kind of get some self-care in and we went to beaver dam which was really cool and today was water wednesday and lucille played in a bird bath (laughs) it was pretty really pretty simple that sounds fun for about like three minutes but we got some water in but it's just like a fun I guess, direction to give you for each day. So it's not so like, what do I do now? And it's just not too much space. Like there's enough space, there's enough flexibility, but at the same time there's structure, which I'm all about. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to hear about your adventures and how this goes this summer with Lucille. For me... Yeah, what are you grateful for, babe? I am grateful for Wednesday afternoon baseball games. Yeah, you, you went out today you yeah. had a day off kind of. i took the day off i took a well-being day and that is a thing where i work which is very cool so my buddy asked me if we wanted to go to an afternoon baseball game today the orioles played the san diego padres and i was like yeah and at first i thought i was going to work a half a day but i was like you know what i'm just going to take a full day i haven't taken a day off yet since i've started this new job i'm going to take a, a day this morning, I got a chance to hang out with Lucille and, and hang around and just kind of lounge around the house a little bit, get some stuff done. And then I met them for lunch um, over at Pratt Street Ale House and then went to an afternoon game. And there was uh, there was five of us and, and one of our friends brought his son along and it was just a lot of fun. Just a dude. It was a bunch dude of afternoon. Dudes a bunch of dudes afternoons, dudes. you know, <laughs> hanging out at 305 Orioles game, watching them get their butts whooped. Which is kind of normal this year, but it's still fun. It's baseball. It's about the people you're with. It is, and and we play this uh, we play this betting game throughout the entire game, which makes it kind of interesting. I bet. And I I I took in a lot today. I I think I won like thirty bucks. That's a nice uh, couple cocktails for us. Yeah. For a date night. Exactly. No cocktails tonight, though. We're we're straight watering it up. 
We are. We're, we're actually we're recording two episodes here in a row. We're recording one tonight, and then we're recording one for when we go to Copenhagen. So we don't want to make we want to make sure that you guys have something to listen to while we're gone. So we are working diligently this week. We sure are to make sure that you guys have some content while we're away. So. Without further ado, Jilly, dun, dun, dun. let's get into postpartum. All right. So I know you have some questions for me, I but do. Um, I think, um, I, I guess now that I'm out of the thick that is postpartum, yeah, I mean, you're still technically in it, right? I mean, I'm healed for the most part. There are some things internally that could be working a little bit better, but eventually that will come. Sure. But... There are a lot of things that I did to make postpartum a little less chaotic that I I want to share in case someone else can benefit from it. And there are some things that I wish I would have known before. Yeah. I think that would have made it a little bit easier. Yeah, I know the, there was that came off a lot when we were when you were going through postpartum. It was like, wow, they, you know, tell you everything you need to do to take care of the kid. They have nothing for you on how to take care of yourself and how your body's going to heal and what the time frame is and, and yes. you, you really that was a guessing game for you and that's the one thing well that's one of not many but one of a few things where um i wish i would have known before i wish i would have i obviously wasn't educated by my gynecologist and i wasn't educated by my pediatrician i don't know if it's their place to really educate the moms i mean they give you a test and a questionnaire to evaluate if you have postpartum depression. So you think they would be the ones qualified and that should deliver, you know, the what you need to know to take care of your body mm-hmm. after childbirth, but they don't. So I have found that I wish I would have known that I have to seek out information to educate myself. And I'm not going to get it from, I, I shouldn't have j- just taken for granted that I was going to hear it from my doctors and my people in the medical field that I was working with because they didn't. Right. And I don't know if that's the same for everyone, but I I wish I would have done more digging to find out what the body goes through during postpartum, what could happen, how long it could take, you know, just to make me feel more comfortable with the changes that was that were happening. And I almost felt like I was taking crazy pills in some points because I'm like, why, why am I not healed yet? And I had a friend who had a baby recently around the same time and you know, she healed a lot quicker, and I think if I would have been more informed about everything that my body was going to go through and that not to have any expectations on how long it could take, I think I would have felt a lot more um, confident and right. more sane throughout the whole process. Yeah. So, you know, with, with that, I kind of wanted to ask you the first question. What was the most difficult thing for you? about postpartum i feel like there was a couple (laughs) yeah oh you can you can tell us a couple things i think the unknown was really scary like i was losing lots of hair at one point and i'm like oh yeah how long does this last it was kind of crazy and then um i'm just gonna say it like pooping was the scariest thing of my life after having a baby i remember you were terrified I mean, I had to take Metamucil to, like, get things going. Mm -hmm. And it was funny. Like, once I started taking it, it was like clockwork. Like, I knew exactly what time I was going to get that (laughs) feeling after I drank my Metamucil. Nothing happens fast. Like, I had my little cup of Metamucil in the morning. And I was like, an hour later, I'm like, I'm going to get those feelings. And sure enough, it was like Jaws music was playing (laughs) as I'm walking to the toilet. No joke. It was like the scariest hour, like, it didn't take an hour to go to the bathroom, but like knowing that time that I that I was gonna have to go, it was like, dun it, like it was just so fucking scary. Yeah, it was terrifying. I almost forgot about the whole Metamucil thing until you just brought it up because I remember I would I would actually go downstairs and stir it up for you while you were breastfeeding in the morning. We had a nice little routine. We did. You stirring my orange drink. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that but I was, never tasted that stuff. It actually was really good. It tasted good? I still wanted to drink it, but I didn't want to have to keep pooping <laughs> all the time. But no, it worked like a charm. I really enjoyed the taste. It was I got the orange flavor, so it there was you go. quite delicious. So orange is good. Um, and I think the other thing that was really, really tough was just, I guess, asking for help. It was hard for me to say... 
like I'm feeling crazy right now or I'm going to lose it or <laughs> like there were times where I was just my hormones were just so out of whack that I thought I was going to lash out and I'm pretty sure I probably it could have happened a couple times some of it's a little bit of a blur I think I, I don't really remember anything that's like that's good <laughs> that's really that good crazy but you know I remember I think I asked a lot you know how are you feeling and stuff like that and I'm not sure if you were able to express you know how you were feeling but you did well to communicate and if you didn't want to talk you communicated that as well and I you know and that's the other thing too is like as a husband it's tough because you don't want to ask too many questions, but you also want to be caring and make sure that we're, at least that I was doing everything that I could to make your life a little bit easier, but I don't want to ask you the same thing over and over again, even though I might know something's wrong. Yeah. When you say that there's nothing wrong and you say it the third time, it's just like, okay, I, I think nothing's wrong, even though I might think that there's something wrong, yeah. but I'm going to stop poking that bear at this point. No, and I'm glad you did that because through that process, I think that's what made me braver about speaking up more clear or not hesitating at all when I'm right. feeling a little bit out of sorts. And there were times where I feel like I held it in a little bit too long. And then I got to the breaking point where I was like, like when my mom would be there, I'm like, mom, can you watch her? I need to go outside like right now. Like right. I think I waited to the very last minute and um, I don't want to, I know like holding it in that stress and everything imploding is not a good idea. But so I think knowing that now, like if I were to have a second one, I just feel better um, prepared and armed <laughs> with more um, a better way to communicate to to ask for help before it gets to that point because right. there were a couple times where I'm like, why am I feeling this way? I shouldn't be feeling this way. Like I have a baby in front of me. Like I should be feeling filled up right now with love and joy. But you need to separate yourself from the babe. Like it's you need that time mm -hmm. to like whatever you want to call it, self-care, just to be separated and just get some alone time. And I think I felt a little bit guilty at first because I was like, why am I feeling this way? Like, I should be really happy we had a baby. And you It's know, a lot of work, though, um, especially for you and, you know, with you breastfeeding and, you know, just being the, the source of comfort for her. I mean, it was a lot. And I still feel like you do a, a ton. I think... I didn't feel like it was a lot of work because I wasn't moving a lot, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm getting all of these things done. And I think that's how my perception has changed. Like now looking back, like just being with her for hours and hours and hours is really exhausting. It is. And I don't have to be moving everywhere. I don't have to be getting things quote unquote done and accomplished. Just being responsible for a tiny living being for hours and hours and hours, it's it's draining mentally, physically, emotionally. And I didn't see it that way. And now re reflecting, I, I see it as work and it is work. It's yeah. a very important job. And, but I also need time to fill myself up so I can be the best version for her and for you. Um, so yeah, those were, those were the toughest parts yeah. of postpartum for me. So you, you kind of alluded to a couple of things that you did, you know, like asking your mom for, for 10 minutes so you can, you know, go outside and, and just kind of be away from it. But what kind of things did you do to help your mental health during postpartum? Definitely walking outside. Um, there were times where Lucille really didn't like the stroller. So mom would just hold Lucille. That's shocking because she loves it now. She does. Um, it took her a while to get used to it, but... I would just walk by myself and listen to a podcast and that really filled me up just being by myself and mm -hmm. walking even if it was for 10 minutes it had to be at least 10 minutes as soon as I got to the 10 minute mark I even timed it I was like all right I feel normal again <laughs> um, so being outside really really helped me and my my mind space all that fun stuff um another thing was just making sure that I I kept scheduling normal things for myself like I still went and got my hair cut like every six to eight weeks. Right. I always feel really good when I get my hair done. Like my girl, Trisha, really, you know, just makes me feel beautiful. I think just doing things to make myself feel confident and sexy were really important. And date nights, yeah. still going on date nights with you. I think we kind of were slacking in the beginning, like maybe the first two weeks, maybe we didn't. But I think after that, we got back on the horse. And yeah, we did. Did we? we? We we no. We got back on after two weeks. Okay, I it, knew there was yeah. some time where we didn't. Like but. we got home and we made ourselves some cocktails. 
Yeah, we did yeah, have some date you're nights. You're like home. celebratory cocktail. I'm, <laughs> That's true. I don't have this baby in me anymore. But yeah, no, it, it took us about it took us about two weeks for us to to go out on our first date night to be comfortable with without her in our sight. You know, you you had had her in your sight basically that whole time. I think just knowing that we were still on good terms, even though I know we were, but just still doing some things for just us like Mm -hmm. some alone time like i know we're both parents and this is all new but it was nice having some time without lucille so we could just concentrate on each other and know that it's important yeah that you know you love me and i love you and it it just meant a lot and i know i still wanted to make you feel like you were (laughs) you were cared for if you know what i mean like you I, did. I, I couldn't have sex for a long time. I think it took three months. I think that's right it took around. three yeah. months, and I was not expecting that. And nobody tells you, like, it could take a long time. I just kind of had this idea, like, after my checkup, I think it's like a six-week checkup, you know, that I was going to get the, the green light. All right, you're good to do everything. And I was not feeling ready. And no. my doctor even told me, like, you're still inflamed, so you're not doing any yeah, of that. Don't do it. Um, I would advise against it. So I know this sounds really silly, but being able to still please you in ways, it made me feel good. It made me feel like we were still kind of normal because, you know, I want to make you feel good during this process. And I know I'm healing and my body went through all of it. But, you know, I think sometimes the dads get left behind. Like, even though your body didn't go through anything traumatic, I think... You guys still need support as well. Like, I think we need a lot of support, but I think we still need to recognize the dads and, you know, give them what they need as well. Well, and from from that standpoint, I I felt bad because, like, you couldn't do anything. And I'm just like, (laughs) I feel, I I don't know. It almost felt like taking advantage kind of, but not really (laughs) because, I don't know. It's kind of weird to, to, to say that, but, you know, it's just like, man, Jill's doing a great job and I can't do shit right now. But... You know, I'm sure there was other ways that, you know, oh I was God. able to support. And, and well, that's know, really what was. My love language is acts of service. Yeah. So just knowing that you were a partner in anything, like even something so small, like if she would cry in the bassinet, instead of you just laying there and like just letting me breastfeed her, you would actually get up and be like, is there anything you need? Or mm-hmm. like you knew that you couldn't really do anything because you don't have the goods. You don't got the milk. <laughs> Didn't have any milk. <laughs> But Nothing flowing through my nipples. Just the presence of you waking up and just acknowledging that, hey, I'm here if you need me. And that's huge. That little thing of you just being awake with me and then just saying, like, I'm here if you need anything. Like, you didn't even have to do anything. But just that small act was just, it was huge. That was that yeah, was how uh, you filled me up. It, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, I know there's a lot of guys who, you know, they take terms if they're doing formula and stuff like that. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, you knew that I was there if you needed a break or if you felt like she just needed to be held and, and walked around for a little bit instead of you having to, to do that. You know, I felt like you know, at least I can take that that load off of you and you can possibly get some, a couple extra minutes of sleep there. But, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it still goes back to, to the very beginning when you said, you know, it's all about communication and you know, there might have been some things that you did communicate. There might have been some things that you didn't. But, you know, one thing that we talked about is like during her sleep time. And it took us for a while to kind of get into a routine. And we kind of figured it out that, OK, especially as she got a little bit older, like the four to six months range that she's probably not hungry if she's crying at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, maybe even at midnight. Mm hmm. So I would take that shift. I would say, okay, I, you know, I'll go in there. I'll comfort her. She probably had a bad dream or there's something going on that just woke her up and she can't go back to sleep. So I would take that. And then we knew kind of around like the the two o'clock mark, that's probably going to be a time when she was, was actually hungry and mm-hmm. needed something. So you kind of took the two to the morning shift um, until it was time to, to wake up. So we were able to, to establish a routine that made things easy for us. Yeah, you were the best tag partner. Hey. We were just playing tag. We're you're in it together. In. We're in it together. And, and I'd do anything for that little girl and for you. So, you know, it made it easy. So even though you didn't take care of me sexually, <laughs> you took care of me mentally, socially, emotionally. Well, in case you didn't know that, that, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Good. No, no, it's, there. you know, when it comes to like the, the sex department, it's just kind of, you don't know. 
but I know there's other ways to, to do things and, and you couldn't do anything. Like, honestly, you couldn't. the sexual part is like the last thing on my mind after childbirth because I'm just so freaked out like what's going on down there yeah. and no yeah, no it was it was kind of a terrifying feeling, process yeah. those first couple of times too so i mean i didn't even want to i didn't even want that mm-mm. no thanks <laughs> um so i guess the the second part you know we, we talked a little bit about mental health but you know what kind of things did you do to help with your physical health well as soon as i was able to walk it took me a while it did take a while that was another thing i I feel more prepared. I had to really swallow the fact that my body went through a traumatic event. And I needed to really understand that my body had to heal. And I think I was so antsy to get up and get back to normal that I I didn't embrace the healing process as well as I thought I as, as well as I could have. So now I feel like better I guess ready for if it ever happened again that I understand like if I'm feeling that way again, I'm just going to embrace the hell out of just sitting on the couch and doing nothing. And it's hard for me because I feel like I am a person that, you know, I like to be moving Mm -hmm. constantly and, you know, trying to do things around the house. And I just had to like say, you know what? I can't do it. I need to just let people do it. Like my mom, I'll do the dishes. I'll do this. And I felt guilty, but I, I needed to heal. Like I needed to just yeah, see, sit like the, there that, and lay that there. To me, like the easy part, like doing the dishes. It's and hard to be doing still. The diapers it's and stuff hard like to do that. Nothing though. Because I know it was, you know, it was tough for you to get up and walk around. So like, so hard. I never changed a diaper before in my life until I had to change Lucille's first diaper, <laughs> and arrested. I became a pro like before I left out of the hospital. Because I mean, you you were bedridden. Um, you only really could get up to to use the restroom, and then you know you came back the first week you were couch ridden and, and bed ridden you know yeah. you really weren't able to get up and do much um so I, I learned how to change diapers very quickly yeah and i guess it was just hard for me to take that like everyone doing things for me because uh, i'm very like independent and mm-hmm. i want to be able to help and i now i i realize i think like going through that process has helped me just be a better person to just wait and not do anything like i think i can embrace the stillness a lot better because of healing Mm -hmm. um would you say that postpartum has really kind of defined our philosophy on life at this point like i know we we had been always kind of like the simplified kind of thing and i'm I'm, and i was just thinking back on certain things that we've done that you know we we've been simplifying things for a long time but i think we've been more intentional as of late and i really think like postpartum we we started understanding like seasons of life and how different changes happen but would you say that that's kind of really got us to where we are right now as far as like our philosophy on life i don't think it was like i don't know like we since we started i i really feel like infertility is what really pivoted us to intentionally Mm -hmm. look and i think that was the starting point but i think after that it's just been another step in our journey. It's just been one more step, one more step, one more step into growing and learning. And I, I don't even see there being like a finish line or getting to the top of the mountain, whatever you want to call it. Like right. I just see our life, our life is just a bunch of beautiful stairs that every time we get, we go up one, we just get wiser and kinder and just happier. And I feel like that was just one of those plot points in our story mm-hmm. that just is helping us just be happier and healthier. So I don't yeah. know if if postpartum was just that pivotal point. I think all of these plot points that we've had in our life since infertility have just made us the people we are and the way we choose to live. Yeah, I agree with that. And speaking of stairs, Lucille <laughs> loves the stairs. <laughs> she sure does. Yeah, scared She's the hell like, out of us this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Parent fail. Parent fail 101. Our kid was crying for us at the top of the stairs. And how she got there? Yeah. yeah. There, Don't call child services on us. We do watch her. I'm sure other parents <laughs> have had moments where... It's that learning experience. They forgot to watch the child. They forgot who's watching the child. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we hear Lucille on the baby monitor. We're all downstairs. And we're like, why do we hear on the baby monitor if... The baby monitor is upstairs, and we all looked at each other, and we're like, where's the baby? 
and Lucille had climbed the steps. Yeah. And nobody Moved knew the gate, it. climbed the steps. Oh and, my gosh, yeah. it happened. So that it is happened. that's that that's that friendly reminder to hey guys, you have a little one. Someone needs to be watching the little one, especially and when they're mobile. So nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. <laughs> as long as you learn from them and grow from them, right? So one of the questions, one of the last questions I had for you is, you know, if you had to do things differently, and I'm sure there's some things you would do differently just because of some of the things that we've talked about, what would you do differently to prepare yourself for postpartum and to, you know, go through that? This is going to sound really stupid, but I would not buy an automated breast pump because that thing (laughs) I used like three times and I said, it's too big. It's too loud. I don't like it. There's too many parts. Yeah. So it didn't take me long before I bought a manual breast pump. And that thing, man, I am like a whiz. And I'm pretty sure I got some like mad muscle skills from pumping in my arms yeah, and my arms. hands. <laughs> um, that sounds really micro, but yeah, that you're going to get the early <laughs> onsets of uh, carpal tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. It's just funny. Everyone's like, oh, get the automated one. You can like do things while it's pumping. And I'm like, nah, not for me. So I've been uh, using the manual and it's been a breeze. And yeah. Um, it's not as bulky either. No, it's not. <laughs> and I'm all about simple, right? Yeah. Um, I wish I would have intentionally planned, I guess, um, things for my body. And when I, I guess, like whether it was a massage or mm-hmm. um, a spa day, I wish I would have planned ahead of time, like every three or four weeks, I'm going to schedule this for me um, because I realized that my body did a lot of fucking work. It did. And I, when I was breastfeeding, and I think, I really think that, I don't know if this is a medical condition, but I think baby neck is a real thing. Oh, because sure. I had a lot of neck and shoulder issues because of breastfeeding and looking down to make sure she's latching and just looking at the baby in general. And I really wish I would have done more throughout postpartum just to really take care of my body um, I think, you know, I was like, oh, this is sore. I totally forgot about, like, your, yeah, your neck and shoulder bad. problem that you had there. I'm really, I think baby neck's a thing. Like, it's got to be. It's tech neck, I don't know if any of the moms neck. have experienced yeah. that. But, you know, oh, tech neck. Yeah. I thought you were blowjob neck. No, no, looking down at Because that's a thing, too, I think. Oh, it might be. <laughs> just don't ever use that as an excuse. No, <laughs> um, so I think just being more mindful of planning ahead just time for healing of my body and just something that makes myself feel good physically some not me moving it's someone else moving it for me um and the last thing i think i would do differently is just allowing more people to help and not feeling guilty or bad about it i think if now anyone wanted to help me and this goes for not even just postpartum like if i'm healing after anything Mm -hmm. just accepting help and not feeling bad about it like can i make you dinner yes can i come over and do your laundry yes uh and just being grateful for it you know i'm i think it takes a brave person to be okay to get help and i'm a lot braver now than i was before so anyone wants to help when i'm feeling blue <laughs> not blue <laughs> when i'm trying to recover um yeah. i will gladly accept it with no guilt whatsoever good because you have a lot of people here who want to help out and make sure your life's a lot easier we so. are so supported i'm so we grateful are. for that we are um it's definitely something we don't take for granted at all not at all but yeah no i think that's some great advice is there anything else you wanted to talk about before diving into to any resources that you might have for people I don't think so. All right. So, resources, Jilly. Resources. So, I found an interesting blog post. It was um, Seven Ways to Feel Your Most Beautiful Postpartum Self. And it's by um, parents.com. And we will put the link in the show notes. Uh, Yes. And I only wanted to share the ones that I didn't think of myself. But I, I really was intrigued. So, the first one to help you feel your most beautiful self during postpartum is just the embrace the idea of a uniform like 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 clothing yeah so finding a very simple outfit very minimal outfit and i think we're really good at this now like 
we don't have a huge wardrobe. It makes it a lot easier to get dressed in the morning. Definitely. So just having something really simple and easy that you feel comfortable wearing every single day in your home because most of us are at home healing. So like whether it's like a really cute pair of spandex or a button down shirt so it's easy for breastfeeding. So just having like a simple uniform that you feel comfortable and confident in and you don't have to think twice about what to wear. It's just something simple that you can move in and you don't feel like a homebody when people want to come visit you. <laughs> so I thought that was an interesting tip. Nice. Another thing they had was create a touch-up basket, which is kind of cute. It makes me think of like a fun gift to give someone who just had a baby. Okay. So What's they, a touch-up basket? I, I guess something to help like make yourself feel like you're put together when people are coming over. Okay. So it's like dry shampoo, mascara, you know, some kind of moisturizer, Just any little tidbits of things that you can quickly put on to make yourself feel like, I look half decent if someone's going to come visit me, and I feel pretty good about it. So I thought that was a really cute idea. That's very interesting. And maybe even deodorant, because sometimes I forgot to put it Yeah, you need to make sure that's in there. Everyone wants to smell fresh, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Another uh, way they had was um, to book a baby mother photo shoot. Okay. This is... I don't know if I'm still into this tip, but I think there might be some who really love photographs. Like, it just wasn't. You know, the only one we did was at the hospital. Me. Yeah, we, and I, I know. Mean, yeah. I think you talked about that either before we had Lucille or shortly after, and you just, I guess you just weren't feeling it. Yeah, and I don't know if I I still would have been feeling it during postpartum, or maybe I could have made myself do some kind of baby mom photo shoot, and maybe that would have helped me feel more like myself because you have to get all, you know, made up and, you know, you get tips from the photographer on how to look really nice in your photo. So I think maybe that would have given me some self-care in and itself with some beautiful photos. It's just, it's it's a slight investment. Right. So if you have the money for it, I think that would have been really, that's really a great idea. So um, just to feel more like yourself. Nice. And another one, the last one that I had was just to relax and appreciate yourself and i feel like the second time around i will be much more comfortable doing nothing and relaxing and healing and just seeking all the help and taking it in so there's gonna be a second time around i don't know so can i just say this one thing if there is one question you okay, never want to ask i know where you're going okay, with this if anyone has a baby that you know and i don't know if other moms can resonate with me and i'm sure they can this is at least for you. If there is one question you're going to ask somebody after they have a baby and it's the mom, please do not ask them, so when are you going to have another kid? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> what, what would you say is a good time range to wait to say that, to ask Never that question? Never ask the question. <laughs> Just wait for them to tell you that they're pregnant. But seriously... Don't ask it right <laughs> after you have a baby. Come on. Jeez. Uh, it's a traumatic experience. Yeah. Imagining doing it again right after is like, what were you thinking? I think I said it jokingly right like after Lucille was born. I was like, you ready to do that again? You're like, don't even ask that. I was oh. like, okay. I was just joking. I know. Yeah. But I just think it's funny when people ask that. I don't know if it's because they don't know what else to say or they feel awkward, but I'd rather have silence then anyone asks me that question again. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So, any other resources? Are we getting into that quote? Oh, the, oh. one more resource, but it's just um, a reference. I did write a blog post. It's called How to Stay Sane with a Newborn. Ah, I do remember and reading that. And it's on the clean and simple life. That's and I just, just wrote a couple little tips of things that helped fill me up during that really dif- difficult time. And I briefly wrote an outline of what our schedule was like during that time and it's kind of interesting to go back and reflect over what my day looked like with Lucille and how different it is now because man it just changes every day and yeah. every second and it's, it's so freaking awesome nice all right so quote of the day time quote of the day the quote of the day is by Mark Amend, and it is sometimes the only answer people are looking for when they are when they ask for help is that they won't have to face the problem alone. No one wants to face their problems alone. And I think that's what made the process a little bit sweeter and happier was because I knew you were by my side and you were present and you were ready to tackle anything. 
I'm oh. pretty sure if you had breast, we're in this together, you would, baby. You would breastfeed Lucille with me. <laughs> if I had, if I had the capability, but uh, I've got nipple fucker. Can you milk me? <laughs> But anyway, the take action from this episode is just, let's just spread more awareness about our unique journeys of just anything, like the trauma, the struggle, because I feel like when more people express the insane parts of their life, we feel a little bit saner because we know we're not alone and it just builds a sense of community and just, it makes you feel a lot happier. Absolutely. Couldn't have said that better, baby. Yay. Nice job. Thanks, babe. All right. So that wraps up our postpartum episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope you have some things to take away if you're expecting or planning a a future kid. Um, You know, or if you know someone who's having a kid, you know that one question that you won't ask them. (laughs) But you know, please share, like, subscribe, write us a review. We would be very, very, very grateful. Other than that, we will talk to you guys next week. See you later, guys. We want to thank everybody for listening today. Please be sure to subscribe and sign up to receive notifications so you know when the next episode is live. If you like today's episode and know someone who could benefit from the topic we covered, please share it with them. And if you have any suggestions for us and want to chime in on today's topic, you can email us at simplifiedchaospodcast at gmail.com, and that's chaos with a K, or send us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you.